Welcome to Lesson 6D, Absorbing Ground. We're going to start talking about ground effects on Gaussian plumes. We're going to start with an absorbing ground, and we'll look at how concentration on the ground varies with distance from the stack. So let's start with our workhorse equation from last time, and this one was for a Gaussian buoyant plume with Z being defined from the ground, and capital H, remember, was both the stack height and the effect of buoyancy, so we stuck a source up there. We want to look at the case where the ground is absorbing. We call that absorbing ground. The ground absorbs the air pollutant. So here's the good news. This is going to be a very short video because we can use this equation as is. We don't have to modify it at all for the case of a ground that absorbs the pollutant. And that's, again, an absorbing ground. Why is that the case? Well, let's analyze this quickly here. When we draw a plume like this, we know that these are all Gaussians and the Gaussian shape keeps spreading out and it gets smaller in magnitude at the center. And eventually it's going to hit the ground. So we called that previously X sub B where it sort of hits the ground. Now remember, these are Gaussian exponential decay curves. So even even here, you might have 10 to the minus 18th as your CJ here. It's not going to ever be zero because of the math, but it's effectively zero. And in real life, it is zero because you don't breathe any of that air pollutant when you're standing here. But someone standing here will indeed start to breathe that air pollutant. It gets to a certain level, maybe 0.1% of the PEL or something like that where you're interested in, and you could measure that. So we'll start to see the effect of the air pollutant on the ground or just a little bit above the ground where you're breathing. Why can we use this exactly as is? Well, if you think about it, everything in this region here, anything below the ground is absorbed into the ground. All the air pollution is absorbed. And so it's gone from the air. It's now in the ground. It actually, you're converting from air pollution to ground pollution. And if this is, say, a lake, it's water pollution. If it's a grassy field, it's absorbed into the grass and it becomes a ground-based pollution. But from an air pollution point of view, we don't see it anymore. We don't, I shouldn't use the word care, but it could cause problems. But from an air pollution point of view, we don't care about it anymore. We don't even know that it's there. But here's the key. The key is that no matter where we're taking any kind of measurement, whether we're here or we're here where I drew this little guy, or we're down here at near the ground, or we're here or we're here, anywhere in this plume, whatever happens to this ground down here does not affect the plume at all. The only difference is, is that we're going to put a restriction that Z has to be greater than zero because it doesn't make sense to calculate anything where Z is below zero because that would be in the ground and we don't care what's going on in the ground. So the bottom line is that we can use the same equation. No modification is necessary except we limit ourselves to Z greater than zero. We're limiting ourselves above the ground. So the same equation we had before, just use it. You've already had done some practice with that one. We've already done an example problem. Let's do another example problem. In fact, this is the same as the previous example from the previous lesson. The only difference is that we're using a different X. So back then we were like less than a kilometer, pretty close to the stack. Here we're far downstream, almost five kilometers downwind of the stack. And this is an absorbing ground. Later we'll deal with reflecting grounds or non-absorbing grounds. These are the same values we had previously for our previous example. So this was HS, the stack height. This was delta H, the plume rise elevation. This is capital U. This is M dot JS. Overcast morning, same as we had before in our Martin model. This was class D. And so we know how to calculate those sigmas. And here's our equation. So everything is identical to what we had previously, except now we're worried about ground level. So this just means that Z equals zero at ground level. And we're looking at the maximum mass concentration on the ground. We're somewhere further down here. We're actually far enough where this plume has hit the ground already. So our X is way back there. But if you're looking at this plume horizontally, it's spreading in the Y and the Z direction. So we have some plume that looks like that, some Gaussian plume. And so the maximum is always right in the center line of the plume. That's true Z wise and Y wise in the Y direction or the horizontal direction. And so the maximum mass concentration is at Y equals zero. So what we're going to do is we'll solve the equation at the given x, x equal 4.85 kilometers, y equals zero, and z equals zero, which is the ground level. 
and we're plugging these constants into that equation. Of course, you have to calculate your sigma y and sigma z, et cetera, using Martin's model. So again, I'm not going to go through all the algebra. I want you to practice this on your own. If you listen to my advice last time, you have this already programmed up for the previous example. Hopefully you listen to my advice and have that in Excel or MATLAB or some other software. So literally the only thing you have to do to get this answer, since everything else is the same, is change our x from the previous value to this value of 4.85 and you should get the right answer. The only other thing that's tricky, this x is greater than one kilometer, whereas the previous one was less than one kilometer. So you use different values of those coefficients. So don't make that mistake. But let me just summarize the results here for you. Do this on your own and you should get this answer. And I gave you these sigmas just to check your math, make sure you're doing this right. At our point of interest, what's our point of interest? The given x center line horizontally and at the ground. And this is what you should get. So make sure you're able to do that. And now I want to do a little bit of analysis, figuring out how this ground concentration varies with distance from the stack, in other words, in the x direction. And so let me again sketch a few of these profiles. I zoomed out further away so that we see more of this plume from a farther distance and we see this plume hit the ground. Again, we're ignoring all of this stuff here. It just gets absorbed into the ground, but the Gaussian equation is still the same for the air. Anything above z equals zero since z is zero at the ground. And so how does cj vary with x? Well, we can tell from these profiles that, again, this might be 10 to the minus 18th or something there at xa, and directly under the plume, and as you keep going, you have pretty much zero until you reach this xb, which we called before xg, where the plume hits the ground. And then we start seeing an uptick in the concentration. We're plotting cj as a function of x. Now at xc, this distance is the value of cj on this plot. So this would be cj comma c at the ground. We're doing this at ground level where we're interested. And so at that distance, let's just call that this point here, at that cj, this would be c j c on this y axis. And so we come up, we may have hit a, a peak already and then we start coming down. And then at D, location D, notice this is a smaller value. So C J D, let's call that somewhere here. So this would be C J D. So we expect the curve just qualitatively to look like this. It starts out zero, 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 the plume hits the ground, we reach some max and then we start decaying. And I don't know in, whether this max is before or after this point C, I'm just doing this qualitatively but you can see what's going on. What I did then was take this exact problem, this problem, all the variables we have here, all the values, instead of just at x equal 4.85, I made that one row in my Excel spreadsheet. And then I just did a whole bunch of other x's so that I could get an actual plot. So this is qualitative, but I did it in Excel for our problem. So for our example problem, we can plot cj as a function of x. And this is what you will be doing for some homework problems. So I urge you to use Excel or MATLAB or whatever you're comfortable with. But Excel is very easy because once you have everything on one row, you can just fill down and put a range of x's and then it's easy to plot it like I did here. Just as a quick sanity check, we can look at the value that we had calculated previously and that was at x equal 4.85. So that's right here at x equal 4.85. You come up and look at where that hits the plot and lo and behold, it's 74.7, .7, which is the same answer we had when we calculated at that point. That was our point of interest along the ground. And so in this case, my qualitative sketch was correct. We reached some maximum somewhere before that point this would be your XB, this would be XA would be somewhere before that XB, then XC would be here, and then XD would be somewhere over here. And so this thing just keeps decaying eventually far enough downstream, you don't have any sense of the plume at all. You don't record anything on an instrument, but this is very useful to predict how these plumes affect people that are on the ground breathing.
I did all this at X equals zero. If you're 1.5 meters above the ground where you're breathing and you want to get a little more accurate, you could use Z as 1.5 meters or some other value. But we often just use zero because the height of a person is usually typically pretty small compared to the height of the plume, that capital H where the plume is way up there. So that's all I have today. This is a pretty short lesson and very simple. Not much math because we're using the same equation we had previously. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos.